Hello, friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you didn't know, that's where you are. If you also didn't know, it's been a long day and my hair looks like shit. However, that's not what you're here for. Also, the quality of your hair, how good you look or don't look, does not determine how good of a person you are, how much of a bad bitch you are. Who the fuck cares? Anyways, like, subscribe, comment, all of those important things. If you're new here, hey, hi, how are you? My name is Chelsea. If you're not new, my name is still Chelsea. I haven't changed it yet. I have a podcast called Down a Rabbit Hole with CC Suarez. That's me. Feel free to follow that on Instagram, review it, rate, subscribe, things like that over on Spotify. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, all of the places where you listen to podcasts. I typically get out episodes on Wednesdays. That's typically when that happens. Not like right in the morning. I'm sorry. It's probably just not going to happen right in the morning, but it's there. It happens. Anyways, today we have a special little treat. You probably saw that there has been a Monate gal. Her name's Angela. She's not the greatest. She kind of sucks, actually. She does present herself as a public figure, so therefore I don't have to conceal her identity. It's just really rough. I will insert some things that she has said. I'll have I'll have Ethan put them somewhere, probably after I say this. Trigger warning. She has said pretty awful things such as white privilege doesn't exist. She talks a lot about like all the stuff she's gone through too, which great, more power to you. But then also says that people who are a part of the Me Too movement are like have a victim mentality. And it's like, but what? Within like that same paragraph, she's admitted to sexual harassment and like sex, like her herself doing sexual assault. So it's real weird. The biggest part was that she said that people having to wear masks and like mask mandates and COVID and all that is the worst. How would she say about it? Basically saying it's worse than the Holocaust. I'm not ever putting a face diaper on ever again for any reason ever again, period. And I've made that decision because I truly believe that what has happened over the last two years is the biggest crimes against humanity that humans have ever seen. Now, you might be like, what about the Holocaust? Um, and I think this is worse. Now, before you get your panties in a bunch, hear me out. She said that. Anytime... Obviously, anytime there's a mass genocide against a group of people, um, it's atrocious. Like, I'm a witch. I fully understand. Okay? When there's a 99.9% survival rate, unless you're obese or have other um, comorbidities, right? Because obesity is the issue. The issue is not getting sick. The issue is that you're fat and you're inflamed and your body can't fight off illness. Like you wouldn't have lived in the Oregon Trail. You wouldn't have survived. That's the type of person we're dealing with right now. Yeah. Now let me say this. You can have any views that you want. You can. You can have any opinion you want. However, there's a difference between facts and opinions. There's a difference between being a dick and then not being a dick. Yeah, this person really sucks. She's very like woo woo. She says that she's a witch. I don't want to diss like people who are witches. Cool. Go for it. Uh, not for me, dude. All right. So anyways, I was able to get a hold of one of her, one of her calls. No, for a fact that she made, let me see here. Looks like she made a little bit over $38,000 in 2021. So she is promoting Monate. Um, also, that's before taxes being taken out. So realistically, it would have probably been more around 30000 or like 28000 depending on what state she's in. I think she's in Colorado. And then also before expenses, which also she spent at least like $4,000 on products in 2021 as well. So... People might be able to live off of $26,000, but that's not life-changing money as your full-time income. So she's lying. It just seems like she's a really shitty person in general. So let's go ahead and watch this Zoom call. I'm sure it's going to be so enlightening, so good. Just honestly, just like really good. So yeah. Hello, everyone. I would like to remind you that every single person can be, oops, <laughs> on our team calls and I post in the Facebook group all like pertinent information about like the humble hustlers calls. Um, this calls from today. Oh no, it's from February 2nd. Well, it was posted today. 
onto YouTube. Gross. The upline should be helping you get there so that you can get into the chat. Um, the chat is where um, a lot of encouragement happens. The chat is a place where I really feel like safe and that my business can thrive and that the people who are in the chat just really care a lot about the success of everyone else. And so I want you to make it your goal to get into the chat so that you can be a part of it. Um, and this is not a punishment at all. This is you working. This is your business. So you should be working to hit your first goal. Just like if you worked for someone else, you would have quotas, you would have um, requirements that were expected of you in your job, right? You don't just get to go to your job and not do the work that you have to do. Um, so this is your first goal is to get into the team chat. After you get into the team chat, I'm going to quickly go through um, what our goals are for getting to Miami and getting to the Bahamas. They're pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna quickly cover these and then we're gonna do a little bit of role playing today, which um, I'm excited about. We're gonna, I'm gonna push you and challenge you a bit. Please, oh my gosh, excuse my mouth. I did not sleep last night. So I am like trying to say things and I keep saying things that don't make sense. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, so that's that. Okay, let me focus. I'll try to find it to include it in this video, but she also posted on Facebook that you can be vaccinated against your will if you get a PCR test, like a, like a COVID test. That's what we're dealing with here. So I wonder if that is included in what she's saying not making sense because I'd say it falls in there as well. So you guys, I'm not going to, I don't want to repeat everything that Aspen has already gone over. I just want to remind you so that maybe if it didn't sink in the first time, it will sink in this time. These trips are truly attainable. Um, this money this month is truly attainable. We've got double bonuses this month. Um, we've got a free iPad. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get the iPad. Um, hilariously, in my first month that I that we were in, that I was in business, we had a challenge. It was the Focus Pocus. It was in October, and the the winner, the prize was an iPad. And I don't even I didn't even want the iPad. I just wanted to like win. And it was announced that I was the winner, and this whole big thing went down. And then the other girl. Um, I guess we had like tied points or whatever. And I was like, she's in college. So I was like, well, she should have the iPad. I am getting this iPad. I'm getting this iPad. Okay. I am winning this iPad and I'm not giving it to anyone because <laughs> I need it. Um, I was actually considering getting another phone, but I don't really want to have two phones just so I can go live on Instagram at the same time as like um, Facebook or whatever. And that will be eliminated because I will get the iPad. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly go through how much money you can make this month. And again, y'all, this is just me being petty and picking on things, but why not picking on things, but being nitpicky? Like, why do you have to clarify that if you win something, you're not going to give it to somebody? I don't understand that. Is that, do they do that often? I don't know. I guess I'm just selfish. I'm not, if I win something, I'm not going to give it to someone else. I mean, that's not technically true. Sometimes I, sometimes I do that. I mean, if I get something from like PR or I don't know. I have like a full ass box of things under my desk that like I do give to people for like Christmas and stuff, but like, I okay, anyways, continuing. That will be eliminated because I will get the iPad. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly go through how much money you can make this month. And again, y'all, I know that some of y'all are like, it's really hard to talk to people. I get it. Like it's hard for every single person. Cut the crap, cut your excuses and get to work. I was talking to Rowan today and um, Rowan is a ballerina. And I was like, dude, if I was a freaking ballerina, I would be selling to every single ballerina, whatever it's called, like studio, those little bun heads, those little kids, they don't need to be having toxic chemicals on their scalp. I would be hollering at every single ballet studio in the United States of America. And I would be like, hi, I'm a professional ballerina. And I like, I would blow up their phone and make sure that they understand the chemicals and toxins that they're putting on their kids' scalps. They would all be having monate, okay? And so just like expanding your vision of what's possible, that the whole point of network marketing is not to limit yourself and pigeonhole yourself to just filming reels, like film reels. Okay. But also do reach outs. The point of network marketing is to recruit people. That's what the, that's what it is. It's money. Literally. She's asking you to just completely. Oh, I look great. By the way, <laughs> I have never looked better. Holy shit. Destroy your network, your circle around you and just completely take advantage of all of them. And also, you dumb dumb, everything has chemicals in it. Everything. Water is a chemical. Did you know that? Because you like to fear monger and try to teach people that you're chemical free. No, you wouldn't exist. If you were chemical free, Angela, you wouldn't exist. 
And every single one of you has something like the ballet studios. Yes, Rowan is a professional dancer. So obviously you have like kind of a leg up with talking to ballet studios. Um, but every single person on here, you have a niche. You have people that only can hear you. The same people that can hear you are not the people that hear me. Each one of us has a certain voice that needs to be heard by certain people. <laughs> a leg up. <laughs> in ballet. Yes, I know. I didn't even, there was no pun intended. That's just my sleepy brain. Wow. Um, all of these bonuses are attainable this month. And um, I will say that a lot of these bonuses, obviously you have to be in the first month. Um, oh my gosh. In, <laughs> in the smart start um, <laughs> period. But if you are not, then that is fine. The people you sign get these bonuses. The people you sign, you're helping them get these bonuses because you're also getting matching bonuses, right? So um, just to clarify, y'all, when you're out of your smart start period, you still get $60 every time you sign for VIPs. You're still getting 15% of every retail sale. You're still getting um, a lot of these bonuses, the rank bonuses, et cetera. You're just not getting the smart start hood bonus um, and block bonus. That's all you're not getting. That's the only difference. So listen, if you're in your smart start, this applies to you. If you're not in your smart start, do not zone out because this applies to the people you enroll. This is a huge selling point for people. So I'm going to quickly go through this and I want you to write it down. The reason that I wrote it down was so that I could learn it. You will not learn it if you don't write it down, no matter how many times you hear it. I want to see your little pins moving. Okay. Remember you sign four VIPs, you get a $60 bonus. You also get 15% of their sale. All right. So generally speaking, each sale, you're going to get $60. That's like, that's like basically what you're going to get from the sale. So you're getting 15% of their sale. You're getting $60 for the VIPs, the four VIPs. And then when you sign one market partner to help them start their business, that's about $250 on average. When you get like the average pack, it depends on the pack they choose, obviously, but you're getting 250 about when you sign a market partner, then you're getting the block bonus, which is 150 for the four VIPs and the one market partner. And then you do that three times and you get the hood bonus. So when you do that three times, you're getting 15% of all 12 of those. Okay, hold the fucking phone. It's so crazy how she's like, so if you recruit one person and sign up for VIPs, you get whatever, whatever, whatever. But then just do that three times. Do you know how hard it is to even recruit one person into this pyramid scheme and keep them? But then also get four people? Oh, we'll just do it three times. Okay. Angela, super easy. Cool. Okay. That's recruiting three people and getting 12 VIPs under you. That is not so attainable, especially if you are being honest. If you're being honest, there is most likely no way that you can get 12 people to sign up under you. If you, VIP, meaning they sign up for the flex ship, which is an auto shipment, they can say all day long. It's not a, it's not an auto shipment. It's a flex ship. You can move it. Yeah. You can do that with mostly all auto ships. Dumbass. Like I'm taking the dog, dumbass. It's just absolutely, absolutely insane. Most VIP customers with Monate have no idea that they are signing up for a three flex ship commitment and that there is a cancellation fee. How many of those VIPs are pushing off their orders so that they don't have to buy it? You're getting your rank bonuses. So when you hit MMP, you get a hundred bucks. This month, when anyone underneath you hits a hundred bucks, they get, a, they get a matching bonus. So they get $200 and you get the matching rank bonus of a hundred dollars. When you hit AMB or when the person underneath you hits AMB, you get the $100 rank bonus two times because it's doubled this month. and like if you're underneath me and you hit AMB, I get your rank bonus too. So you want your people to rank so that you get their bonuses as well. Then when they hit MB market builder, it's 150. It's doubled this month. That's $300. And you're also getting the, the matching rank bonus. And then when they hit MMB, which I want you all to hit MMB, help your people, help your people hit MMP. All you need is two people to each sign two people to hit MMB, y'all. That's the rank she's at. She's at managing market builder last time I checked. So it's interesting that she wants everyone under her to hit that rank. I wonder why. Probably so that she can rank up as well. And she could be like, I want Chelsea, that's her job. Yeah, it fucking shouldn't be. We've talked about what it takes to rank up. 
that's their job. Sure. And I, I want them to be honest and talk about it. But also I want them to set the right expectations. And that's not what's happening. When they hit MMB, when you hit MMB, it's $500 rank bonus. $500 just for ranking. Plus you get the iPad. This month only when you hit MMB. There is no reason that every single one of you cannot have two people underneath you, each sign two people, and you get an iPad and you get a $500 rank bonus. Plus, if you're still in your smart start, you're getting all of the money that I just told you. And in any way, get out of your own head. Even if you're out of your smart start program, which who is, I am, I'm out of my smart start. I am going to help you do that. I have told y'all, you will get so much more value when the people underneath you win. When one of y'all hits a rank, when one of y'all, one of y'all gets a bonus, I care so much more than when I hit it myself. It's just like, oh my God, yes, you did it. You did it. You did it. So even if you're out of your smart start, help your people understand how much money is on the table. I can't stand when they say this shit because it's this girl, it's the same thing. Like she doesn't care when she reaches, you know, ranks up. She cares about when you rank up, but when you rank up, she ranks up girl. When you sign a market partner, just be like, look, get two people to sign hit MMP, make 200 bucks right then and there. Instantly 200 bucks you hit when you hit MMP this month, another 200 bucks this month, when you hit AMB, another 200, no, another 300 bucks. When you hit market builder this month, every single person you enroll, you should be going through this with and be like, this is how much money you can make this month. A lot of money. And you know what? I had an attitude. I'm going to be real. I had an attitude about, um, like being out of smart start and not getting all these bonuses and things. But then Aspen like totally put me in my place. She was like, the point of smart start is to give you a solid foundation, not to like hold your hand the entire time you're in the business. I was like, okay, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that was funny. That was a joke. Glad you got it. Not, you know, she doesn't even respond to my text when I do that. It's like, <laughs> so embarrassing. You would not know that I'm almost 40. Sometimes by the way that I act, wow. Okay. I cannot believe that she literally just said that her upline ignores her. <laughs> I don't blame her upline. And also her upline today responded to a few DMs and was like, I say a few DMs, it was, I'm pretty sure only one, but she responded to a DM and she's like, I can't control what everyone says or what anyone says. We're all out of different views, but like, I'm basically saying like, I'm not accountable for what she says. And then she posted something that <laughs> said like, that she was going through it, I guess. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. But also, yeah, she's right. I don't I don't think her upline should be held accountable for someone else's actions. That's like me, kind of, me being held accountable for another creator's actions. Don't get mad at the upline, get mad at her. However, I think it is a learning experience and that it shows Monate, I almost called it Monate, uplines and downlines and whatever. Like, okay, well, you work closely with this person, you are going to receive some backlash. And I've said it so many times, this is the issue with multi-level marketing companies not being held accountable. And that's something I've said over and over again. And I said it on TikTok today as well. I'm way too spicy over there. So be sure to follow. But that's one of the many issues with multi-level marketing companies is that anyone can join. The MLM should fire her instantly today, right now. I hope they do. I don't think they will. Please go over this with every single person that you are, that is considering becoming a market partner. If you tell them this, this is how much money you can make by signing your friends on, by telling people about the best products in the world. You can make $3,500 this month plus a free iPad. Uh, no, I cannot say when they say this shit. This is how much money you can make by signing your friends on. Okay. Telling people about the best products in the world. No, you have to sell the products. They have to buy them. You're not being paid by talking about it. You're not being paid by promoting it. That's not how that works. Otherwise, it'd just be an ad read. Let's do it. All right. No excuses. Now I'm going to be a little bit rude. Okay. Now it's time. I can't get my papers unstuck. <laughs> I can't even be rude because I can't get my papers unstuck. Okay. Now it's time to be rude. Okay. I'm not even going to be rude. I don't have the energy for it. So. I am going to go over how you're getting to Miami and how you're getting to the Bahamas. These are non-negotiables. I told y'all when Aspen tells me to sign two market partners the last week in January, there is no excuse. You have seven days. It is a choice. It is a choice to sign market partners. That is a choice. It is simply a numbers game. It is simply a numbers game. Hey, would you like to earn a free trip to Miami and the Bahamas with me? And oh, would you also like to make $3,500 and get a free iPad? <sighs> It's not a free trip. You can't say that. You can't say that. Like, how about instead of doing this team call, how about y'all read through your own compliance 
requirements and guidelines. It is not a free trip. It's a work trip. I would hope they would fucking comp stuff. Also, it's a shared room, typically. Sometimes you do. There's like different tiers of what they'll give you. I was going to try to go to it because I thought that would be really, really funny. So we'll see. I don't know. They usually go during the week, though, which is funny because it's like, it's clearly fucking cheaper for them to go then instead of like going on a weekend. No? Okay. I'll talk to somebody else. Bye. It is a choice to sign market partners. And I know the conversations are challenging and I know it's uncomfortable. And I know we all have excuses. I do too. I'm not calling you out because I have my own excuses. Trust me, but there's no excuse. So the who signed two market partners the last week in January? Anyone? Jamie did and me. Not cool. So that's okay. Now it's time to get to work. Your goal in February is to hit A and B. At the bare minimum, your goal is A and B. Your goal in February is also to sign three new market partners. So you're like the three new market partners, not three active lines. An active line is someone who has 200 PV or higher, obviously, but your goal is to sign three new market partners in February and hit A and B. And then obviously your PV and your GV for, for A and B. You should know what those are by now. They're in your compensation plan. In March, okay, so in February, non-negotiable, three new market partners. That means if you're signing three new market partners, you need to be on track for the Bahamas by signing a minimum of 12 VIPs personally. So I actually divided up my Bahama Mama sheet by tiers. And my goal is to hit tier one this month. My goal is to hit tier one. So I didn't even know that I hit, I was one of the only people who like qualified for Vegas tier, tier three. And I can't even bring, I'm not even bringing anyone with me, even though I qualified to bring a friend because the only friend I would bring is one of you. And I can't bring you because you're a market partner and I'm not allowed to bring you on trips. You have to earn them. So I don't have anyone that I even want to bring because I would only want to bring one of you or all of you. Um, but I can't do that, obviously. So she doesn't have any friends outside of money, money, whatever the fuck. Also, how condescending is that? It's like, but I can't bring you. So you're going to have FOMO. And I was one of the only people to qualify and y'all can't come and I'm going to be there alone and I want to bring you, but I can't, but it's your fault, girl. Ugh. Your goal, my goal this month, I divided up my Bahama mama sheet into tiers. I want tier three, bottom line, even if, I mean, I hope I have someone to bring with me by then. We'll see. <laughs> no one knows. Um, so I want tier three because I want an additional flight. And listen, listen, Nella cannot leave the country. She cannot go on director's trips. She cannot go to the, bah to the Bahamas. She cannot leave the country because she is illegal. She still earns the trips because it's a thing. You earn them because you, you need to earn them for your own like well-being. So even if you can't, like, even if you live in a country and you're like, I'm not going to go to the Bahamas, um, that's, that's fine. That's a fine. I may not even go at that point. If I don't know much about like being illegal but i feel like she shouldn't have publicly said that i don't like that she just said that and we look girl girl listen we have family and friends who don't have their citizenship yet that's how we say it comment below was that like not am i being too sensitive is that not good i don't like that she just said that though meanwhile i'm looking up ipads <laughs> even if you live in a country and you're like i'm not going to go to the bahamas um that's that's fine that's a fine i may not even go at that point if if, you know, masks are required still at that point, it may not happen because I've made a decision not to mask myself. And that's something that I stand beside behind. You know what I mean? So if masks are still required at the, at the trip of the Bahamas, that is, wow. When it's time for the Bahamas trip, I don't know that I will go. And that is the truth. I will probably drive to Las Vegas and I will probably drive to Miami um, because I'm not putting a mask on my face. So even if I don't go to the Bahamas, I'm still going to earn it, right? Just do it. Just earn it. The CDC, doctors, all those people have even said that cloth masks are essentially just a facial decoration. I understand that. I feel like something is better than nothing, though. You know, like being being healthy and taking care of your body is really what's, what's most important here. Just follow the fucking rules, dude. Do you think I want to wear a, fuck, a mask on a plane? No, I can hardly breathe in them and it sucks and it's not comfortable and I don't like it. That's the law of the land or of whatever company owns whatever fucking space that you're in. Or if someone has a rule in their house, you follow it. You're in their house. If a store, a country, a county, a restaurant has a rule, just fucking follow it. I feel like people like this are just making it so much more difficult for everyone else. And yes, I understand this is a whole new like world that we're living in. We don't, no one knows what the fuck we're doing. The CDC is really pissing me off. <laughs> and our government is 
just full of a bunch of idiots. So I understand that, but this ain't it either. So she calls masks face diapers, which is annoying. She lives in Colorado and she would drive to Miami instead of just getting a flight and wearing a mask. So February A and B, three new market partners, and then you have your PV and your GV. In March, by the way, if you're out of your smart start, the way that you make money is your personal volume. That's the way that you make money in this business. The higher your personal volume, the more of a percentage you get on your group volume. So even though I'm out of smart start and I won't be getting all of the hoods and block bonuses, I know that the way that I make money is to sign people. So um, March is A and B. No, also, okay, so March. There you go, people. Listen to the witch. She said it's the way you sign people is, or the way you make money is signing people up. That's it. Is to maintain A and B or to hit M and B. And then you want to help, help at least one of your downlines hit MMP. So you want to help you, one of the people that you sign on, sign on two people. Now, I may say this and you're like, oh, duh. No, I've heard this so many times from people. Oh, I'm definitely gonna hit this month, don't worry. That's not how this works. It's not a given. You know, we had a couple of people who were really, really close to rank advancing last month and they didn't hit it because it's not a given. Like you cannot say, oh, of course I'm gonna hit it. That's a given. No, it's not. You have to put in the daily work. We know this. So in March, your goal is to maintain A and B at least and help someone in your downline hit MMP, work with them to help them sign two people. And if you have someone in your downline that isn't interested in working, then you need to work on signing more people. So in March, you need four new market partners. Y'all know, I just told Michelle this, I have signed over 60 market partners on my own. I've never even heard from half of them. You cannot sign someone and expect that they are going to help you rank. It is not going to happen. I don't care if it's your sister. I don't care if it's a stranger. You cannot count on any person to help you get somewhere. No, a lot of people hit MMP. you like, um, my first market partner that I ever signed, she was like, I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to go to the top. I haven't heard from her in like three months. I've sent her two, two months. I've sent her messages, nothing. I don't know what's happening. I care. I wonder, I hope she's okay. But like, I'm like, are you okay? I hope you're okay. But you, again, you have to understand you cannot rely on someone. And this is why it is a numbers game. So you want to sign on as many people as possible and give them the resources because someone's going to run with it and someone or someone may not. So in April, April is your MMB month. I mean, I would rather you hit it in March um, because as of right now, I'm taking myself on a really bougie vacation because there are no, there's no one who hit MMB yet. Um, and I really wanted to go on like a leadership trip in April at the end of April. So in order to go with me on a bougie vacation, just me and you, <laughs> Just kidding. I would like it to be many of you. Um, you have to hit MMB in March in order to come with me. And if there's only one of you, I'm going to pay for your flight and everything. If there's two of you, I'll pay for your flight and everything too. Like I was just going to pay for like the place, the like cabin, the food, etc. And if there's just a few of you, I'll just pay for everything. Like I'm not afraid. So you have to hit MMB in March if you want to come on a romantic getaway <laughs> with me. And Naka, of course. <laughs> Duh. My bra is so tight. I don't know why it's like <laughs> hurting. Oh, okay. So I want you to hit MMB in March. Um, I would like that for that to be your goal, but at the very least for Miami and for the Bahamas, April is your MMB month. MMB y'all, it is not an like MMB is you're helping two people rank, get their rank bonuses by signing two people underneath them. Everybody knows two people that can join them in this business. Everybody knows two strangers who need this. Everybody, everybody can find two people in a month to join them in the business. You got to get out of your head, sorry, out of your emotions and get to work. So your goal is to help people underneath you rank. That's the only, that's the only way you can hit MMB. MMB is the first rank that is not a choice. As in you yourself cannot do it. You need to rely on people beneath you. And all of the ranks above MMB are relying on people beneath you too. So this is where you have to learn how to encourage the people beneath you. <clears throat> Again, um, May, hold MMB, help your people hit MMP. Help, once you help your people sign people and they see their bonuses and they see their paychecks, they're gonna want it more, but you have to help them. If you have a market partner that is not in our group chat, your goal is to get them in our group chat as soon as possible. All right, and then in June, um, you wanna hit AMM. AMM is you have one MMB line underneath you. And then um, MM is the car rank. The next rank is the car rank. Um, I know this seems like a lot and maybe it is. It doesn't seem like a lot to me because I've already decided that I'm going to have it. But um, y'all, a fully paid for car, fully paid for vacations with one another. Like even if you can't go, you can still get the car. It's not fully paid for. 
like the misinformation is just oozing out of this woman. Guess how many of them got their bonus? Paid as rank bonus. Not that many because a lot of them are dropping ranks because they can't maintain it because people are realizing, oh shit, this is a commercial cult and dropping off and then they're not re-qualifying for those ranks. You don't have to pay for your car. They pay for your car every single month. So like when I, you know, <laughs> trade my Mercedes Benz in and they're like, oh, we don't owe you anything because this car is worth more. I'm going to be like, no, no, please just keep it. We did April and May. April is MMB month. May is MMB. Also, a lot of you people are in Canada and you guys can have your little lone Canadian romantic getaway and I'll pay for it. Okay. Even if you can't come and join me on a vacation, girl, I will hook you up at a bougie ass hotel that does not require masks. I will write you a medical exemption. <laughs> and like, even if you can't come, even if you live in the UK or even if you live in Australia, like I will make it worth your while if you cannot join us. She, she'll what? She'll write a medical exemption. She can't do that. Is this woman a doctor? Help. <laughs> what the fuck? I am so much more concerned now. She has to have another job. She has to. Angela, I have questions. On a weekend, like, is, <laughs> hello children. I love children on the call. Yay. I will hook you up. Like, just because you can't come does not mean that you're not gonna get anything. But also you get so much just by ranking and by getting your people's successes. You're getting people the opportunity to stay home with their kids. You're giving people an opportunity to change their lives. And I want you to remember that. This is about so much more. Um, than just shampoo, obviously. So um, that's that. That's all I have for you. Um, I would love to do some role playing if you are struggling with something in your business. <laughs> yeah, Liam wants that Cadillac. Liam, me too. All right. I'm like trying to get an Escalade. I'm like, I'm about to put some spinners on that mother. Okay. I'm about to be big pimping with like a gold steering wheel cover. You have never seen someone as tacky as me with money. Like, I love to be tacky. I love just to be like so tacky. It's like, they call it like shabby chic or something. It's like, no, no, no. I'm like ultimate bouge, but like tacky. I think it's so much fun. Apparently fugly is in, didn't know, but um, right up my alley. Okay. So team let's do ratchet. I am so ratchet. When my nail girl cuts my nails, I'm like too short, too short. She's like, Angela, they're so long, so long. I think I would be really good as like a Jersey housewife or like I mean, I obviously would want to work, but I think I would be really, really good at just like being obnoxious with money. I think it would be so much fun. <laughs> to be honest, I'd probably just give it all away. My husband would be like, stop that. You can't just give everything away. Why not? Okay, let's talk. What is um, happening? What are you struggling with? What do you feel like is the biggest obstacle to achieving all of these goals? I'm not going to be honest. I look at this sheet and I'm like, ah, <laughs> do you see how many squares there are? You have to help me fill these. Okay. These are not all me. These are me. These are us. Okay. That's a lot of squares. I know you look at this and go like, ah, I do too, but I need you to understand this. And we talked about this, talked about this a little bit in the chat. Wow. My brain, we talked about this a little bit in the chat. I feel like I'm just like a broken record just now. Talk about this in the chat. Talk about this in the chat. Um, your limiting belief, like truly your limiting belief is a lie. You have lied to yourself and you have created a limiting belief and you are the only person that can fix that. And I mean this with every single cell in my being. You are the only person that can fix it. You are the only person that can create a brand new truth that you feel in your body. When I was growing up and my, <clears throat> wow. My family was just like, yeah, we don't, my, I remember my, my grandma actually said to me one time, yeah, we don't have nice things. I remember like specifically my grandma saying, yeah, we don't have nice things. That's not for people like us. I was like, oh, and I looked around and my cousins just accepted it. And I was like, I do not accept that. <laughs> okay. I don't accept that. So my grandma, she's dead now, but, um, she, she, I grew up in a town called Lumberbridge and it was a town of like less than hundred people. And in the town proper, there were these huge sprawling mansions of people who had owned plantations, cotton and tobacco plantations, specifically where I'm from. My grandma lived out of town on the County line out with the Native Americans, the Lumbee Indians that live out where I grew up. And she, we would have to chase wild boars off of the property because they would try to attack us while we were swimming in the swimming pool. And the fire department would have to come fill up my grandma's swimming pool because she didn't have any other way to fill it up. And 
I remember like leaving town and all these sprawling mansions and going to my grandma's house and being like, oh, we don't, we don't get to have like nice things. Everything is hand me down. Everything is on sale. And y'all, I mean it when I say that if I can do this business, anyone can. I mean it when I say that if I can hit the numbers I hit, you can too. There is nothing special about me. My family told me we don't have nice things. We don't go to college. We, we don't, we just get a job and like hope that we, that we make enough money to like feed our kids. No one told me that I could create the life that I have now. So you grew up poor? Okay. So do a lot of people. Yeah, there's such a thing as like class privilege and obviously white privilege as well. But also like, y <sighs> and then the, the opposite as well, just because you, you know, grew up wealthy and, you know, your parents or grandparents have money doesn't automatically mean that you have money. Just because you grew up poor doesn't mean you're going to stay poor. No one told me that I could create the life that I have now. Like sitting in this massive house, overlooking the mountains, off grid. Like I never thought I would ever be able to afford anything even close to this. And I mean it when I say that you are the only person who is stopping you from getting the things that you want. You are the the story that you tell yourself is a story that is so untrue. And you know that it's untrue in your body. And I actually, for the life of me, cannot tell you why you do it, except that it's the human condition. But it annoys me. And it hurts me to no end to watch you limit yourself by believing that you cannot do something or have something. This might be very ignorant of me, but she's saying that she lives off grid. Isn't that a lamp behind her? She has a computer and a phone and clearly has Wi-Fi. Is that, is that off grid then? I don't, I feel like it's not. I have seen you go from a very kind of, um, I mean, I love you. So I'm going to say what I mean. I've seen you go from a very kind of, Woo who I, you know, submissive, I can't do this to like dominating Instagram reels, like drama to the max, like my favorite actress. I'm like, oh, there she goes again. Like, what is she doing on reels? I'm like shocked at what you can do when you decide you're going to do it. And I love that feeling in my body because to be honest, most people don't do that. They just stay who they've always been and they just don't ever push or challenge themselves because it makes you and everyone around you uncomfortable. When I see you with your leg out, like, um, you know, like your whole thigh is out. I'm like, okay, my girl is stretching and growing. My girl is making herself uncomfortable. I'm so proud of you. And like most people look at you and it makes them uncomfortable because you're changing before our eyes and you're choosing a different outcome for your life. And y'all, most people don't want you to do that because if Dakota gets better, what does that mean about me? I have to get better. If Michelle gets better, if Kaylin gets better, if Rowan gets better, if Nicole gets better, if Patricia gets better, what does that mean about me? I have to keep upping my game. The reason why it's so hard to like crack into the celebrity scene or whatever is because if you get in there, you have to be good enough to challenge those people to be better. And that's why wealthy people hang out with wealthier people. Not, no, what? Girl, what the fuck are you talking about? I've said to so many people, if you are going to a niche, a genre of content that is, that there are already people there and who are very successful, you need to be able to bring something else to the table or you need to be able to do it either just as good or better than those people who are already doing it do. Does that make sense? Did I, did I just butcher the phrase, like the structure of that sentence? Probably. Beautiful people hang out with more beautiful people. Successful people hang out with more successful people because I want to be so uncomfortable that I have to become a better version of myself. I want to be so in awe of who you are that I have to stretch and become someone else. So I know that these numbers, and I know that this sounds intimidating, but nothing to me sounds worse than working for a person who determines how much I'm worth, who determines how much I have to work, who determines how I spend my time. Nothing is worse than that. So if I have to sit in this chair for 10 hours until I hit these numbers, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Stop, I cannot. Oh my God, she... I cannot. She just contradicted herself so much. She said, I don't want to work where someone says what I have to do, how much I have to work. So if I have to sit in this chair for 10 hours to hit these numbers, you just said that you're, you just said the thing. Even if you work for an MLM, like I cannot stand when they do this. I'm going off. I'm not sorry. I cannot stand when they say shit like this. Like, oh, well, I don't want to work for anyone else. Guess what? In an MLM, you not only have an upline, but you also have, you know, corporate compliance and the heads of the company to answer to. You're still answering to the company. 
You're still working for someone. Oh, I don't want to have to, you know, hit these quotas and do that. You still have goals to meet and metrics to hit in an MLM. You look at the fucking shit you're holding up. Like that literally says all the stuff that you have to do to make money. Like, I don't understand what they are doing. Because I'm doing it on my own time and I don't need anyone to pay my bills. And I don't ever want to have to rely on anyone to pay my bills. If I decide to have a child by myself, I will do it by myself and I will pay for everything and I will be perfectly fine. And I know that with every cell in my being. So I know that the numbers feel intimidating, but what is your alternative? What does you paying your own bills, not relying on anyone and having a baby by yourself, which you can raise a baby by yourself, but you cannot reproduce by yourself. I mean, I guess she could, I guess she could adopt. Is that what she means? I don't fucking know. Who knows? Not me, not her. She's in control of it. She's the only one who, you know, dictates this and that. She just said earlier, her success is dependent on her downline and how many people she recruits. So there is something in a coach in the coaching industry. Y'all know this called like you burn the boat. You go to the Island, you decide you're going to make it work and you burn the boat. There is no alternative. I went all in on this business. There's no alternative. There's no Maybe I won't do the work this month. Maybe I won't hit my numbers this month. That doesn't exist. So I want you to make the decision to hit these numbers. I want you to encourage people to make this much money. I want us all to get a mom. Oh my God. I can't wait for my Monate iPad. Like it's going to say Monate on it. I can't wait. <laughs> like to get, to get to go to Miami, to this leadership experience, y'all to like introduce my team to the president and to the family, the Erdinata family. Like this is my team. These are the people that I'm running with. I'm so excited. Is it purple? I hope it's purple. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I want, like, I want to do this with you. I don't want to do it by myself. It's like so sad that none of you guys can come to Vegas with me because none of you, most of you weren't even on the team yet, but you didn't qualify in time. Um, but I want you there with me. So let's go through some things. I want to hear about um, whatever you're going through. What are you struggling with? So we can role play it. We can work through it. I mean, I have some role play examples as well that I can give you, but here's the real talk. If you're not willing to role play with me and be uncomfortable and sell me something and work, then you're not going to be able to sell to someone you don't know. Like if you're not, if you cannot sell me rejuvenate oil right now. Yeah. The replay will be in the Facebook group. It's streaming live. If you cannot sell me this rejuvenate oil right now, you can't sell this to anybody. You can't. So, um, who wants to who wants to kick it off? Who wants to tell me what you're struggling with? The whole burn the boats bullshit was wasn't it because some dickhead conquistador they got to like Mexico or some shit and he burned all of his boats because he was a fucking psychopath and didn't want his people to be able to like turn around because he wanted to find gold. I don't know. Who am I? A historian? No, and I'm not gonna pretend to be. However, you do have another option, ma'am. This is a great example of when the sunk cost fallacy goes way too far. Industry as a whole has made you believe that you don't have any other option and that this is the only way. How exhausting is that? Who wants to role play? Who wants to like work through some of your kinks right now? This is the best place to do it. <laughs> Who wants to work through some of your kinks? Someone just pops on in a fucking gimp suit. <laughs> like, hey, I heard we were working out our kinks. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. So actually, this was a situation scenario that happened to me yesterday, and um, I put it in the chat earlier. I was ready in my body to talk to someone in the store who was they were complimenting me on my nails, and it was a mom and a daughter, and I saw them somewhere. And then when we were waiting online, they were behind me, and they were like, and the mom was like, "Oh, your nails are pretty." And we were having a conversation. And I was like, "This is my chance," but. I totally froze up and got in my head about it because I didn't have like um, a business card. And I think really just the logistics of like getting their contact information before I even needed the contact inf their contact information or me getting them theirs became a thing. And so I ended up like talking myself out of it, um, even broaching the subject and I'm kicking myself over it. So um, I would love to You've talked about how you're creeping on people in the grocery store in the freezer aisle. And I'm that that's gonna I could totally do that. That's me. I'm into it. I'm the one that's like walking down the aisles, like singing and dancing at the grocery store and, and starting conversations. So um I would love to go through that. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is you have to be all in. You have to make the decision that you're gonna do it. Um, and that's it, the end. Like you just have to decide, I am doing this, the end. I am all in. I'm gonna talk to this person no matter what happens. Because the reality is you have no idea how they're gonna respond or what's gonna happen, zero, and you will never know if you don't try. So I tell myself, 
I am going to talk to this person. Like as if my life depends on it, I will talk to this person. Now, normally I have some kind of money gear on. So I'm like, Hey, <laughs> um, also, you need to make sure your hair looks good. Like you, you need to make sure that like, like my hair is in an oil bun right now. So it just depends on the circumstances. Like I make things funny because I think that it's funny when things are funny. So if someone were complimenting me on my nails, I would be like, interesting that you ask because I am in the beauty, beauty. industry. Right. And I would just, I would, I would make it funny. So let's pretend that I am in the checkout aisle and I am behind you. And you said she had her daughter with her. Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm behind you in the checkout line. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have such nice nails. And then, okay, you're a human. So humans engage in conversation. Nails and hair are not, they're the same thing. They're dead. So maybe you could start there. Oh, did you know my nails are dead? Just like my hair. The only hair that is alive is on your scalp. I was ready to, I was like, thank you. So, you know, I was ready to compliment them on their hair because they were beautiful women um, and start the conversation that way. I think where I guess probably because it was kind of emotion, like they were like getting onto online to go somewhere else. I would have, I probably got caught, like I said, I got caught up in the logistics of like, if I'm not going to close the sale right there, like, how can I, what, how would I give them my information or take their information? Uh, like well, everyone without being a creep. There is nobody in Monet. Y'all, please get this out of your head that you think you're going to get a business card and you're going to hand it to people and you're going to start getting sales. The likelihood that you give your business card to someone and they ever contact you is very slim. Like very, very, very slim. You need to get their information. And remember, they need to be invested. So let's play. I'm in the, I am in the line behind you. I have my kid, whatever. I'm, I'm headed somewhere and I'm like, oh my gosh, you do have such nice nails. Go. Thank you. Um, well, actually I work in beauty and I was showing them, um, I was like, this is, these are the nails that I'm thinking of getting this weekend. What do you think? They're like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. And I'm like, so that was where I was about to talk to them about. This is excruciating. This is so the worst role playing I've ever fucking seen. He's so happy that he's in my lap right now. I also just can't stand the fact when she was like, and I, I'm, I like when things are funny. So I make things funny and, um, you just have to talk and just do it. You know, humans are conversational. We partake in conversation. What are you saying about, um, like their hair and what I do and, and how they would love, they would love what I'm, what I'm doing. So and are so you, are you getting paid to show them on your phone, your nails that you're going to get next. No. So why did you think it was okay? Like, you know, I want you to just hear me out. You get your phone out. You're like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to get these nails next. You're not getting paid for that. So you're having a conversation with someone, a transactional conversation, and they're intrigued and they're listening to you. And that's the perfect opportunity to get them invested. So to say, hey, yeah, I'm going to get these nails next. And also while I have your attention and you seem like an incredible human being, let me tell you about this thing that I do that's also in beauty and it's changing my life. Like just be yourself. Just be yourself. Like, that's not a good conversation. I'd say about 80% of people would be like, uh, gotta go. Like, no, thank you. I was just giving you a compliment. I would much rather have someone like say, oh, yeah, I, oh, these are the ones I think I'm gonna get next. Oh, okay, awesome. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh, and your hair is pretty too. Like, lead the conversation there instead of going right on in. Like, that's not a good sales tactic at all. I literally talk to people in Whole Foods and I'm like, hey, I see you have receding hair. I can help you with that. Like you, you just say what you mean, because the reality is you're probably never going to see that person ever again. And so what could you say that would possibly go wrong? Yeah, just in, just insult people in the grocery store. You're not going to see them again. Who gives a fuck? I try to if I am like out and about, which is rare. But if I am out of my house, I make a point to compliment at least four people while I'm out. Just random fucking genuine compliments. I try so hard to do that. That is so fucking rude. Hey, I see you have receding, a receding hairline. I can help you with that. Well, I didn't ask for your fucking help. How about that? Or maybe point something. And then there's nothing wrong with having a receding hairline. There's nothing fucking wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with balding. There's nothing wrong with not having perfect, beautiful, long hair. It's taking everything in me not to tear this bitch apart. That really just pissed me off. Just completely unsolicited. 
Exactly, Wiggum. Just try it. Right. So each time you're in the grocery store, I just want you to try it. I want you to walk up to someone and compliment them. And then you always want to ask that person a question. Asking them a question gets them invested. So say, could you do me a favor? And then ask them a question, get them invested. Could you do me a favor? You have actually really great hair. Can you tell me what you use on your hair? And then they're like, oh yeah, I use like Pantene or something, whatever. And you're like, are you really, really happy with your hair? Are you completely in love with your hair? Well, most people say like, I don't really care. I don't really know. I don't know. No. And I would be like, Hey, no, seriously. Are you like truly in love with your hair? Like have a conversation with this person. It doesn't matter if it lasts one minute or five minutes and you'll refine this over time, but you won't refine it by not doing it. Just do it. Yes. I walked out kicking myself. I was like, you could have done that. You could have done that. What were you thinking? Um, yourself if you don't do it, you're going to kick yourself if it goes weird and you're going to freaking celebrate the freak out of yourself. If it goes well, kick, kick or well, like, and it's, it, it can be awkward. It can be totally awkward. And that's fine. You can say people, people say, I don't, you know, I don't want information. Great. Fine. No, obviously no obligation, but you also don't know that person's circumstances. You don't know if that mother really needs to work from home. You do not know her circumstances until you ask her, you could say, do me a favor. I know things are weird in the world right now. Like, do you work from home? Stop approaching strangers in public. Stop soliciting to people. Are you interested in adding another? Are you interested in working from home? Are you, what if I showed you, we could carry this around. What if I showed you how you could make $3,500 this month? No, I'm serious. Yes. But like, you're going to kick yourself if you don't do it. And if it goes weirdly, you're gonna kick yourself a little bit. And then if it goes really well, you're going to freaking celebrate and you're going to do it again and again and again and again. Have you accepted money? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Like I make it. So I have a rule every single time I go into public at any public place, I have to talk to at least one stranger. Now I talk to every single person who doesn't have a mask on. I'm like, hi, it's so nice to see your face. And I'm really obnoxious because it pisses all the masked people off. I think it's fun, Excellent. but it's usually men. But if I see a woman, I, I have to talk to her about money and it's okay. If I lose, it's okay. If they don't want more information. And actually a lot of people have asked me for my business card, but I just ask them for their email and I email them right on the spot. You pull your phone out, you send them an email. Say, I'll talk, I'll follow up with you later. Yes. All right. That was, I mean, yeah, I was, I was ready. I was, I was ready to do it. And then I talked myself out of it because I didn't know how to close the conversation, like close the conversation in a way to follow up with them later. I'm that's just, it was far. Thank God this woman does not live in Florida. So that is unfortunate and annoying and I hate it. And the science has changed so much since we first got into this pandemic. It sucks. Remember when all of us were washing our hands constantly? We thought that was going to help. Yeah, that didn't work. It's a shit show. What are you going to do? She has a hard time closing human beings in public because we are all awkward and it is weird to do that. It's much easier to talk to strangers on social media, but you just have to get over yourself and you honestly just have to do it. Everyone in Whole Foods knows I'm the girl who walks around and encourages people to take their masks off. I talk to people about their hair and I always have my dog with me. Like they, they know who I am. And so I, you have to be unapologetically in love with the business, in love with your life and know what you have for someone. You have to know that. Like they know I'm always wearing shampoo clothes or like a necklace, right? It's that trust that you're building with people. And once you feel that trust in your body. Did she just say she's always wearing shampoo clothes or a necklace? Also, did she just say that she always brings her dog into a grocery store? Are you allowed to bring your dog into Whole Foods? I don't think you're allowed to do that unless she has a service dog, which I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that she doesn't. You're not allowed to have dogs in Whole Foods. So I feel like this video is going to get worse. I I honestly can't bring myself to watch more of her content. It's really just gross. Yeah, because it's gross stuff, not to quote Elmo, but I don't like it. I just, I really don't like it. If you want to see more crazy stuff from her, go to Detective Lovey or Small Anti-MLM Angel or I Don't Want No Huns on Instagram. I triggered everyone. Now I'm famous and you can't be canceled, blah, blah, blah. And then that one bitch on TikTok with the glasses <laughs> popped up and went and like destroyed her. It was insane. Oh my God. It was absolutely insane. I don't always like that girl. Sometimes I think she takes it way too far. But with this one, I was like, oh shit. 
girl when I saw those glasses. I was like, yes, I've never been happier to see that girl. Yeah, so that was very interesting and hilarious, personally, that there is a difference between being canceled and being held accountable for your shitty behavior. And also just don't be fucking stupid and say that the Holocaust wasn't as bad as you having to wear a fucking mask. Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being you. Thank you for supporting the podcast. I really do appreciate that. But yeah, thank you for being you. Thank you for loving Wiggum. He appreciates it so much. If you want to send anything to the P.O. Box, feel free to. It is on the About tab on my YouTube page. P.O. Box unboxings at the end of my videos. I don't have one for this video though. Sorry. Goodbye. I love you. See you later. You're so valuable and beautiful. You better stay spicy. Wiggum, are you gonna tell them? You gonna tell them they gotta stay spicy? Okay, I gotta take off these lashes and we gotta go cuddle on the couch. So we will see you later. Goodbye.